is a video for reviewing some of the stuff. So based on emails sent to me and um, some topics that I know I would like to maybe do a few more examples on. These are the three things that I'm going to talk about. Um, finding limits, um, strategies for finding limits, examples for implicit differentiation, what's really going on there, and um, sort of a general setup for optimization problems. Again, for optimization problems, um, every problem is unique in its own way, so you have to figure out a way um, to translate the word problem into equations, but we can, we can still sort of um, squeeze out a general approach for like at least what to look for and what are some common strategies again for those things so let's start with limits um now where is this useful i'm not going to go into the technical details of what limits mean so i think i think that part is um i think all of you understand it's you're trying to guess what happens at that particular input which for some reason we cannot directly plug in so we look at the left and the right and so on now the in application terms uh, where we use limits is in finding derivatives using definition okay so whenever we say using definition it means that you cannot directly say for example derivative of x squared is 2x you have to use the limit definition what is the limit definition the limit definition says that the derivative at any point a is the limit h going to zero f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So inherently, this is sort of a zero over zero situation, right? Because as h becomes smaller, whatever your function is, even if it's increasing really fast, as h gets closer to zero, f of a plus h is just f of a. So you're doing a a very small number divided by another small number. So it's not sure what's going to happen each time, right? Now we can you know, like sort of mess with the notation a little bit and just write it as f prime x instead of a um, to get the more familiar form x over h. Now some common examples um, would be like the one I said. Let's say f of x is x squared, right? Then f prime of x would be the limit h going to 0, x plus h squared minus x squared over h. So this is definition. You have to write this down each time, right? And then you look for strategies to simplify this. Now, this is a difference of squares on the top. So it's x plus h minus x and x plus h plus x. Now, x minus x cancels and h cancels so you are in fact left with an expression whose limit you can find because now you can plug in and this becomes 2x can plug in what that means is no rules are of math are broken right so basically in your case what are you looking for you're looking for um, no division by zero so as long as you, you can, you know, the, by plugging in, you're not creating a zero by zero, a division by zero situation, sorry, you can plug in. Now, common strategies um, so, or common tools slash strategies, um, foil and check for cancellation. Mm, then another big one is rationalization rationalizing type situation right one of the examples for that would be root x now, if you're trying to find f prime x for root x that would end up being square root of x plus h minus square root of x over h now the problem here is there is no identity for this Like with squares, we had an identity. Even with cubes, you can foil them out and cancel a bunch of things and it still works out fine. But for square roots, we don't have any identity. There is no, no nice way that this can be represented. 
However, instead of an identity for square roots, what we do have is the ability to multiply by 1 and to rewrite that 1 in a creative way. The creative way is writing it as square root of x plus h plus root x over square root of x plus h plus root x and hoping that something nice happens. Now, one of the reasons why this rationalizing stuff works is because we create a minus b a plus b so we create a square right and by creating the square we get rid of the square root so this would be square root of x plus h squared minus root of x squared over h times root of x plus h plus root of x and then on the top x plus h minus x that's what's going to save us yeah, because that gives me 1. Now it's safe to plug in. Now I can plug in h equals 0 and I get 1 over root x plus root x, which is 1 over 2 root x. Okay, so that's um, rationalizing kind of helps in that case. Um, so get another example, let's say it's 1 over x. In that case, the kind of limit that you're finding is 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x over h. So this is fraction of fraction, or which means you'll have to do some sort of taking LCMs and hoping some things cancel out. And they, they actually, they cancel out, right? The LCM is x and x plus h. So here you get x minus x plus h times 1 over h. Kind of similar situation as with square root. Except now you end up with negative h and then x times x plus h times h. Once that h which was creating the division by 0 is cancelled, you can plug in to get negative 1 over x squared. Okay, so similarly you can combine these two, maybe have 1 over root x, right? That becomes a little more complicated. In that case, first of all, you always write the definition before you think about what is a strategy that might work. So first let's take LCM because we've got fractions of fractions and it, none of which looks nice. So that would be root x, root x plus h, times 1 over h, which flips from the denominator, and I have a root x minus a root of x plus h. Now, I know what I, what I can do with this. We can use the rationalizing strategy. Right? So here, we're going to use the rationalizing strategy again. So basically this, what this is showing is that once you have a tool, um, keep, keep, keep that in mind because when you see the conditions being favorable for using that tool, then just go ahead and use it. And that way you make sure, you know, you are ready to use um, different combinations of all the tools that you have learned. And as expected, the reason why we did this was because we know what's gonna happen this will become x minus x minus h and on the bottom we have this x we have a root x we have a root x plus h we have a root x plus root of x plus h which is all fine because none of these are giving me a division by zero the only problem is this h which gets sorted out once that gets sorted out i can plug in this so i have negative one i have a root x another root x and a root x plus a root x. So root x times root x, that's x, and 2 root x. So that's negative 1 over 2 x to the 3 over 2. You can verify that's what it should be, right? Because that's x to the negative half, so you have negative half x to the negative 3 halves. So to write it in a more familiar way, this would... So you can verify directly that indeed that is a derivative. So, um, 
the essential rule is you don't if you can plug in without creating a division by zero or breaking any rules then you're fine then just go ahead and plug it if you can't then the whole goal is to do something so that it comes out to be a form that you can okay okay so um i kind of don't want to do a whole really long video so i'm going to stop this video here um just as we finished covering limits and strategies then in the next one i'll do um, implicit differentiation uh, pick some examples from the worksheet and then followed by optimization part so that's it for this video